Wasail Rats. So it's the sixth, the sixth new moon, and it's the solar eclipse. And I'm just going to say, who stole the sun today? There's no sunshine. It's chilly. It's not right. So, six new moon, and I thought we would do a Tesla trap energy to see reading so that we can see what you're trying to break through. So, it's year of the metal rat. Can I please have three cards? for the Tesla Trap Energy. Okay, got three cards there. Now, we're going to add, wrong deck, we're gonna use the Muse deck, not the Muse deck, the Lightseer's deck, to give you your molecules your internal journey. One, two. Three. Oh, four. Five. I just need one more. Six. And then we need your middle journey. Where does it get you? Oh, that's too many cards. Sorry, just bear with. There's one over there which is part of it. Can you please have two more cards? That's so funny. <laughs> That's two. I need one more, please. Just one more card. So. We begin with the Tesla trap. Your Tesla trap begins with the Tesla trap frequency, three and six. So the way the Tesla trap works, um, Nikola Tesla had a code, a magic code of nine numbers. Three, six, and nine are the numbers that are the energetic sphere and trap with the solution. Um, one, two, four, eight, seven, five card order are the molecules with the internal journey and the externalizing of the journey. So this is the flashing frequency of your internal journey, your struggling rats to find like a home within your spiritual journey. You're struggling with the notion of how you internalize thoughts and emotions to bring you comfort. And so your, the energy around that is sealed off. Um, and that's good. You know, you, you, we need these traps to have a bounce between. The other end, the externalized part, is the beautiful card of rainbow, which is 41, five, change. And this is in the position of the sixth frequency. So you're bouncing between these two frequencies. They're rushing in and out of your existence and you're trying to work your way past them. So, your journey begins each time in this trap formation with the Two of Swords. Now, I do see this as being untangled but actually, it seems the most important part that I'm getting from this is the elbowing side. It's this need within you to nudge yourself forwards and you can't, you can't see the way forwards as you start this journey. And yet, coming from her hand is magical stardust. So the gifts are within you are within your internal thoughts. 
Um, but what tends to happen is as these thoughts first come to the surface, you don't know how to untangle them. It's almost, I was going to say it's almost like a marionette, like I'm doing a string puppet that's all tied up. And then the next card's got a marionette in it. So your second part of your internal journey is hot. <laughs> Look at that devil. Who wouldn't want to go turn to the devil? if you look like that. So this is the energy of transformation. It's, ah, oh, it's your higher self is tempting you. Your higher self is tempting you and it's saying, I want to release, the, the, release you from these tangles. I want to take these tangles away from you, if you could just focus on how to hear me, to reach me, but it's struggling to get through this barrier that you have within your sacred space. So there's something about your ego that is not allowing you to it's not that you're not seeing the signs. I know that there's a sense of this blindfold, but the second card, his eyes are wide open. Your higher self is really calling out to you. It's this puppet that's you. It's just the signs are there, but you just don't want to hear them. <coughs> so, the culmination of this movement through untangling and connecting with your higher self. It's so sweet. It's, uh, it's a, the card is saying that your higher self has always been there. This is you and your, you and your higher self from birth. And this is your journey through life. And this is your higher self and you together, still together, never alone from your higher self. And, that epiphany point within you is what is meant to be driving your internal journey of thoughts, emotions, and, uh, and passions, and how do you externalize them? So the next half of the journey is externalizing. So it's card number one, one plus one is two, which gives us a second step. Two. two plus two is four, which is this lower card here, down at the bottom. They're the internal journey. So four plus four is eight. Eight is the first card of your external journey. So here we have six of swords. So your spirit is drawing your energies, is delivering you um, enticing you forwards into the real world but you're not looking at it you've got your suitcase you're tugging at your hair you're not seeing that you're being divinely guided by your higher self you're not looking at it but when you arrive somewhere you you're having this epiphany point so um eight plus eight is 16 16 one and six make seven this is the seventh position in the reading so this is the sun look this is this is getting out the boat in the real world and beginning to have the epiphanies where you see that spirit has been leading you to the most amazing places and this card has just below it the rainbow. You know, this is that epiphany point that you have over and over again, where everything comes into focus. There's a sharpness, there's a motion forwards. And then we have seven and seven is 14, one plus four is five, so the fifth card the last part of your external journey forwards is balance. You finally, each time you come into balance, no more 
the tangled soul, but the balanced soul, and a warrior with her. That's very oh, um, interesting because the samurai sword there, I got a sense of it being in the back of this boat, only it isn't quite, but I did see this as a samurai sword briefly. As if you, you've always been a warrior, a spiritual warrior, but you've not, you're not noticing it. You're holding on to your suitcase of all your possessions that you're taking with you. But here you're in balance. So this is the molecules, the journey through the molecules that you're having. And when you reach this Libra balance point, this trapping energy returns you back to the beginning where you suddenly lose those, lose faith, I guess is the way to put it, and you tangle yourself back up again, and your higher self has to start sending messages to you again, because it's always there with you. So, this trap, this energy, how are you going to break through it? So this is card three, three plus three is six, six plus six, is 12 and 1 plus 2 is 3. So you're trapped between this frequency. So the missing number is 9, which is why I always say 9 is a divine. This is the divine number coming in with the solution if you can apply this solution. So the taming of the wind, 55. This is when all that whirling vortex, because the devil card often represents a vortex, um, swirling around us. This is when spirit comes in and calms and tames the wind. But that has to happen with you. But it's the notion that this is 55 as well, which is the master number of the fifth dimension, which is obviously this new world energy that we're moving towards. So you're heading towards this energy. It's like there's a, a guarantee, but there's something you have to do to get there. So then we have the middle card. So what is this pathway to activate your taming of the wind? Queen of Voices. The Queen of Voices is the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is always the energy of cutting away, she's a very fierce queen, she's powerful. But the wonderful thing about the Muse deck is that because it's called Voices, it's telling you that thoughts need to be verbalized. There's magic in saying words, giving form to what we say. So there's, okay, part of it is saying you have to watch your words. You have to think about what you're saying um, there's a real sense of, it, I'm getting this real sense of not pecking at yourself, not keep, don't bully or stress yourself out, rats. Just find, find the focus and voice the motions forwards that you need. Now, I laughed earlier because in your journey forwards, we have the devil again. And uh, she's very, very different, this devil, to the earlier one. Absolutely gorgeous. So, what is she asking? She's got this puppetry thing going on again. But this is about you. She has the strings on her fingers. Her higher self, all of this wonderful energy above, is when you have self-love and your sacral is um, flowing properly, then you begin to work where you pull the strings with your higher self. So this was not listening. This is absolutely in the flow with your higher self. And what does that bring? Three of materials. 
Um, it's uh, this is like a heart of endless possibilities today. It's um, everything woven together properly in your life, the flow coming together because you and your higher self are working with the energies properly to create something way more stable. Now, I just want to end the readings with a final card, but I'm not sure which deck, whether to go with the Mystical Oracle or this. Okay, this one, thank you. So can we just have an outcome, please? Oh, that's gorgeous. 63, 36, the Tesla code trap is three and six, six and three. Personal power. Whoa. So this is fierce. This is high priestess energy. This is your sacral in line. This is you and your higher self absolutely as one working together. I have to look at it for a minute. It's such a beautiful card. It's cracking. There's, I can hear. Uh, it's like being on fire, but with, and it is about um, blue flames of truth, spoken truth. It's like you find your voice. Okay, you find your voice. So your your journey through this solar eclipse is to find your voice, rats. Okay, that's lovely. Anyway, Wassail, I'll be doing some more readings as we head towards this solar eclipse, but I wanted to get these animal energies up for you because you've got things to do. We've all got things to do before the eclipse. So Wassail, 